Hey, Tom here from the Run Testers with another multi tester shoe review. In this video, we are going to be looking at the Nike Air Zoom Terra Kyger 8 running shoe. Uh, big thanks to Sports Shoes for sending us the test versions of these shoes so we could do this review. So let's jump in and have a look and see what we all thought. The Nike Air Zoom Terra Kyga 8 costs £124.95 or $140. It weighs in at 309 grams or 10.9 ounces for men in a size 9 and the drop is 4 millimeters. The Nike Air Zoom Terra Kyger 8 is a lightweight trail shoe that's made to tackle varied terrain with speed, featuring a secure fit in the upper to keep your foot in place over uneven ground. That upper is a breathable mesh material to keep your feet cool that includes a lining to keep debris out. There's also a React midsole phone to deliver a firmer ride with a sprinkling of cushioning and a Zoom Air unit in the forefoot to add responsiveness. The outsole is covered with multi-directional lugs that are designed to provide a good level of grip and the heel is built to lock the foot in place so it doesn't move around over tricky ground. There's also a rock plate to protect the foot on pointy terrain, a skin layering at the toes for extra cover and a padded tongue for comfort. So I actually went half size down in the uh, Nike Terra Kyga because I've had have found with Nike trail shoes in the past that they come up very big and roomy at the forefoot and even half size down on my normal size I still found that to be the case like I had a lot of room around the forefoot so I'd certainly recommend going half size down if you have a fairly narrow foot uh, like myself. The hold around the kind of midfoot and heel was great though no problems of any kind of slippage on the run. Fit for me in the Terra Kyga 8 was true to size. Um, definitely, I wouldn't go higher or lower than that. I did find that it was comfortable to an extent, so it did feel quite secure, mainly around the, the midsection and the heel of the shoe. I did find that the forefoot felt a little bit roomy, and as a result, it sort of bunched up when I was running, which made it slightly uncomfortable. It's not a major issue, but um, it definitely seems to be a bit of um, difference between the support in the back of the shoe and the front of the shoe. So I've done just shy of 50k of running in the Terra Kyger, uh, and most of that's been in my kind of local forest, which was which is fairly soft trails in general, but they kind of hardened up towards the end of that period as it got a bit sunnier here in the UK. But I took it through some pretty deep muddy sections as well, which is why I'm not holding it much because it is you know quite muddy. Also, obviously a bit of road in there to and from the forest. Uh, broadly speaking, it's not really left a lasting impression on me. I will say that it's nimbler than the Pegasus Trail, the other kind of Nike trail shoe I've tested. Um, but you know, it's still quite heavy and doesn't really come across as that agile on the run despite actually feeling quite light and looking like it's going to be fairly lightweight so the ride's not all that speedy and it's not all that cushioned either i'd say like i found that it did feel cushioned enough for like an easy kind of 10 miler in the forest but it was starting to feel a bit heavy uh, towards the end of that run and also then slightly harsh if i did like kind of any kind of fast running in the shoe like the ride is fairly harsh without being speedy enough to kind of justify that firmness in my opinion it's not a shoe i'd really use much for road to trail either because of that like i think it you know it can be a bit firm on the road for extended periods especially compared to the kind of pegasus trail three uh, the grip is quite interesting too, like uh, the lugs are fairly deep and they did find quite good grip on muddy ground I found. I also did some quite sharp descents on either mud or kind of, you know, firmer kind of narrow trails and it always gripped quite well for me. However, it did still have that slight kind of Nike problem of being a bit kind of skittish on hard wet ground. Um, you know, it wasn't, I didn't have a lot of that on my runs. It wasn't a major problem, but yeah, the grip isn't outstanding, I'd say, um, despite, you know, being a bit better on that front than the Pegasus Trail, which is much more of a road trail shoe. So overall, it's, it's just not a shoe I adored running in, I would say that, and it's probably not one I'll keep around in my rotation. I think it's just, it's not that agile, it's not that comfy, so it doesn't really work that well for me in any of my kind of trail runs. If I'm looking to go fast, there are faster shoes. And if I'm looking for kind of, you know, an easy plod, there are certainly more comfortable options. So I've done about 40K in the Terra Kyger 8 so far. Um, I'm currently coming off an injury, so I've not been doing anything fast. I've just been doing base pace, um, 10Ks. So that for me is around five minute kilometers. Uh, and just really seeing how it delivers at that sort of consistent pace. I have been doing it over various terrains, so from harder gravel surfaces to uh, mud and um, fields. Uh, and that has large, uh, in the UK at the moment, there isn't any rain. So I've actually struggled to test this out in muddy conditions. So it's largely been on uh, drier uh, conditions um, on terrain that's a little bit harder. I'd say that over those runs, I've not been disappointed by the Terra Kyger 8. I think it's 
it's a fine tune for um, general trail running, but I definitely didn't find it that enjoyable to wear. I didn't find myself wanting to put it on when I went out for a trail run. And the main reason for that is it's quite a minimal shoe in feel. It, it's it's quite firm in the midsole um, and it also feels quite uh, light in the upper, which isn't a bad thing, but overall it generally makes the shoe less comfortable. I'd, I'd normally like something for my trail runs, which has a little bit more cushioning in it. Um, and just feels a bit more comfortable on those runs. I definitely didn't want to go out in this run because I knew that I wouldn't have that cushioning that I like to get from a trail shoe. It's pretty clear that the focus for the Terrakiger 8 is the lightweight design of it. I think it's a shoe predominantly made for shorter distance trail runs, so five to 10K, I, I wouldn't take this over 10K just because it doesn't feel like it gives you the comfort or cushioning that you'd want if you're gonna do longer distances. So um, it definitely feels like a nippy shoe. It feels quite quick when you're running out there. And as a result, it's, it's better at those shorter, faster paced efforts. For longer efforts and the runs that I was doing, I was doing at a pace that I would generally run longer distances in, like half marathons or further. It just didn't seem to offer me any sort of comfort benefits that I'd like for those runs. But over the 5 to 10k, if I was running fast, I think it would be completely fine. It definitely feels lightweight. Um, although I would say that there are shoes out there that are lightweight trail options, which do feel a lot lighter than this. I think this sits in a weird realm between trying to be quite cushioned but also trying to be minimal as well and so for me it doesn't seem to really fit into any sort of trail run that I would want to do. That React midsole I've just mentioned it's quite firm. Um, it's not a problem at those faster paces and I definitely think it would be better on softer surfaces. When I've been running on softer mud on grass it feels a lot better than it does on harder surfaces. It just feels a little bit uncomfortable when you're running on those harder surfaces so I definitely wouldn't like to use it for uh, road to trail or if I'm running on hard compact surfaces in the mountains or things like that just because it doesn't feel it's offering the support and the softness that I would like from a trail shoe on hard surfaces. One thing that I did struggle with with the Terrakiga 8 is the upper. It seems to be quite inconsistent. Um, the back of the shoe does feel quite supportive. It's still fairly minimal across the whole of the upper, um, but the back of the shoe really holds the foot in place. It feels quite secure, um, feels quite supportive. The front of the shoe doesn't know. I do find that um, there seems to be an, uh, quite a bit of extra space in the front of the shoe. The main section here is this sort of mesh material, which is quite light and loose. Uh, and it's got this harder section at the front, which has got this sort of toe cap, which is there to protect um, the toes. But as a result, I found that this wider section at the front seems to bunch up a bit when you're running in it. And it can, it's not that uncomfortable, but it's not comfortable. It's It, it doesn't seem to um, work together, that, that hard front bit and the softer mesh behind it. So what I did find is that if I was running downhill quickly, that, that front section sort of bunches up and doesn't seem to work for me and can be a little bit more uncomfortable than I would normally like. I think the outsole is very good. The lugs are just the right size and shape to tackle um, softer inclines and declines. I, I tested it on a few inclines and declines and it felt absolutely fine. Didn't feel like I was gonna fall over or slip or anything like that. So I think the outsole is very good. Um, the, I did would say that on harder surfaces, it is quite stiff and firm so it's not very comfortable when you're running on harder surfaces it just feels a little bit jarring and not deadening the impact which i'd like over those um runs my verdict on the nike terra kaiga 8 is it's a solid shoe if you really want a short distance option for very specific terrains. I don't think it's a very versatile shoe. I wouldn't use this for long distance efforts. I wouldn't use it for hard surfaces. Um, and I probably, although I haven't tested it yet because we haven't had a lot of mud here, I don't think those lugs are gonna be able to deal with British wet, muddy conditions very well. They're quite light. Um, the runs that I would use it for would be uh, softer ground um, in the trails, like if you're in a woodland or something like that over short distances. I think it's a fast shoe. I, I definitely think it is designed for picking up the pace a bit and being quite nimble. Um, but if your trail running is a little bit more varied than that, and when I go trail running, I can be running for any distance and it can be on all sorts of terrain. I don't think it works very well because you're gonna find terrains that just this shoe just doesn't work for. So it's a very specific shoe. Um, and I think there are other options out there if that's what you're looking for. Those other options, if you really want a lightweight shoe, I would go for 
really at the other end of the scale, the Arcteryx Northern SL2, which is an incredibly light shoe um, and one that I would never use over 10K because it's just so minimal in terms of what it delivers. It's not very good at uh, long distance runs. It's not very comfortable over long distance runs, but it is a very fast shoe. So if you, if you want something that is ultimately about speed um, over a specific terrains, I think that is a better option than this because this doesn't seem to fit into any um, specific category. I'd also say that the North Face Flight Vective series uh, is a good option as well if speed um, and nimbleness is a thing that you want from your trail running. That shoe has a carbon plate in it. It also has feels like it's got a bit more padding and protection in the midsole and the outsole than this shoe. Um, so it's definitely a good one to go for if you really care about speed um, and you're not that bothered about long distance comfort. Um, with lots of cushioning in it. The shoe that I would actually go for instead of this if I wanted something that is focused on a similar thing but is actually a bit more versatile is the Saucony Peregrine 12 uh, or 11. I'd probably go for the 11 if you can find that one cheaper. That shoe is just, it's very similar in the, the level of midsole that you get to the Terrakiga 8, um, but it's just a lot more versatile. It's, it's way more comfortable in the upper, it feels a lot better at harder ground. It's, it can deal with road to trail very well. And it's just a much better all-rounder than, than this shoe. I think this shoe is very specific to a certain type of user. And um, if you only want one pair of trail shoes to cover you for everything, this isn't gonna do it because um, you, you're fairly stuck in terms of the distances and the terrains that you can cover. So the Nike Terrakiga is a solid shoe, but it's not one that I'd really consider a favourite. I don't think it helped the shoe that I was testing it at the same time I was testing the Hocker Speed Goat 5, which I think is an outstanding all-round trail shoe. At the same time, I was also actually testing the Innovate Park Claw G280, which um, is billed as a road to trail shoe, but actually grips really well, maybe even better than this, certainly on some surfaces, whilst being more comfortable on the road as well. You know, you think about other Nike shoe, the Pegasus Trail 3 has its flaws, like it's not fantastic in terms of grip, but uh, you can see a purpose with that shoe for me, like it's a comfortable shoe, it's really good on the road and it's good on light trails, and although it's a bit heavy, it's a lovely shoe to cruise around in. Um, I'm just not 100% on what the Kyger is meant to excel at, like it's not really very comfortable, it's not very speedy, uh, it's quite heavy, it doesn't have absolutely superb grip, so it ends up kind of an okay all-rounder whilst not really doing anything one thing that well but in that kind of all-rounder category there are certainly several shoes i'd have ahead of it the hoka speed goat is definitely one of them and actually the hoka torrent 2 as well um it's also the Saucony peregrine 13 the salomon sense ride 4 you know just a few shoes that i think just kind of outdo the terra Kyger across the board so yeah unless you're absolutely desperate to stick within nike's range and are going on kind of slightly more tricky trails that they're Basically, the Pegasus Trail 3 can't handle. It's not one that I'd highly recommend. Even though I didn't really hate running in the shoe or anything, it just doesn't really stand out to me. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon. And check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from the latest road and trail shoes, as well as watches and headphones out at the moment. If you want to support the channel as well, you can buy us a coffee using the coffee link in the caption below. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon.